Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Hello everyone. So uh, since the last two weeks, uh, many people have been asking about the ZS case study. How to solve a case study, give a sample case study and try to discuss a little bit more on that. Uh, since I've received a lot of requests about this case study solving and there is no prolific example as such in the YouTube or the Google platform that how to specifically solve a ZS associates case study and how is this case study exactly, what are the type of questions in it. Uh, since there is there is no one who has given a proper solution to it. So uh, I think that I will be able to give you a, uh, if not a very, very good idea, but at least an idea about how to uh, solve the case study and what are the types of questions in the case study. So first of all, I have attached a, a Google Drive link in the description box. Go and click on the Google Drive link and download the sample case study problem of ZS Associates. And then I will discuss here how to solve the questions that have been mentioned here. That's a diluted version of a Z associate sample case study. The actual case study is a little more complex than that, but that will basically fetch you an idea of how the questions are meant to be in a case study problem uh, for Z associate. So go immediately pause the video, go in the description box and download that uh, uh, Z associate sample case study that's been given in the description box, the Google Drive link of the same. Go and download it. So I hope that you have downloaded the same and you are uh, up with that uh, question paper with that uh, sample case study problem. So if you have gone through the, uh, through, the, through the details of the problem, you would find that the introduction of the problem says that foamy soaps have come to ZS for solution uh, of how many sales force to actually recruit to increase the number of sales or optimize the number of sales and what are the deficiencies in their existing system. So ZS Associates basically is a consultancy company who will give a solution and will uh, actually give an idea of how many sales force to inculcate to optimize the profit or optimize the income. So uh, discussing about the first problem that uh, for me so has given to ZS Associates and ZS Associates have in turn asked us to solve the case study is basically uh, they have told that if I consult to the first problem that is part one says determine the optimal sales force size for warehouses and shops. Now this optimal sales force size may not be 200 that's also been mentioned here it cannot be it may not be 200 it can be anything that optimizes the data. So first of all let's consider for the warehouses what will be the sales force that we require. So if you go to page number 7 and uh, refer to the chart there that I have already placed out here that for uh, big money you need to make uh, four visits per week and there are 50 warehouses. For uh, tough ones there are 100 warehouses and you need to make three visits per week. For uh, smart buys 150, visit, uh, 150 warehouses and two visits per week. For friendlies it is 200 warehouses and two visits per week and for uh, easies it is 300 warehouses and one visit per week. So how many number of visits, total number of visits per week does the category uh, big money requires? Big money requires 200 visits in a week. That is 50 into 4. Similarly, tough ones need 300 visits. Small ones need, tough ones need 300 visits. Small one needs 300 visits, 150 into 2 per week. Friendlies needs 400 visits and easies need 300 visits. Now you will see the total summation of this 2 plus 3, 5, 5 plus 3, 8, 8 plus 4, 12, 12 plus 3, 15. So you get 1500 visits and we know that if you see the problem statement a salesperson visiting warehouses can make maximum of 12 visits per week. 
So if I have calculated the, the thing for 50 to 2, for 200, 100 into 3, 300 visits per week, 150 into 2, 300 visits per week, 200 into 2, 400 visits per week and 300 into 1, 300 visits per week, which gives me a figure of uh, 1,500 divided by 12 will give me the number of salesperson I need to recruit in the process. Number of salesperson I need to recruit for the process. Now, if that gives me an idea of the number of salesperson that I need to recruit for the process, uh, will come to a figure that will bring me the warehouse's optimum number of uh, salesperson that I need to recruit to cover up all the uh, categories. Now questions may be such that maximum 200 visits can be made, like or maximum 100 visits can be made. So if that is the case, then you should always go for the categories that would fetch you the maximum amount of money. So in some problems, you will be given a merchant value. So merchant value basically, in some case studies, I've seen that it is given, ZS has given some merchant value associated with particular category or particular warehouse. So what happens is that merchant value means that is most valuable customer of mine. So I'm going to target that customer first. So whatever be the number of visits I need to recruit, there, supposedly big money, big money as the name suggests is the uh, category that's going to fetch me the num largest number or highest number of money. So I'm going to use most of my task force, most of my sales force there. So if I have to convert that, I need to make 50, cover, cover 50 warehouses under that and I need to make 4 visits per week for that 50 warehouses. So I need to make 200 visits uh, per week in that uh, warehouse. So if I need to make 200 visits, I will assign 200 there and I will keep on doing the process if supposedly my 100 is my maximum maximum sales force that I can give. Supposedly I say. So what I can reach is maximum 1200. So I will keep on assigning sales force to the category with the highest merchant value. That is big one I will associate 200. Then I will go for the tough ones that is 300. Then I will go for the smart buyers 300. Then I will go for the friendlies 400. So 200 plus 300, 500 plus 300. Uh, 800 plus 400 gives me 1200. I cannot go 12. I can only go to uh, 1200. So I will stop here. I will not target the easy ones because that's not going to fetch me much money. Supposedly saying if my merchant value suggests so. So higher the merchant value in a problem, you will have to assign your sales force to that particular category only if the question demands so. Here there is no limitation. You can go for here this condition doesn't exist, you can go for this number of salesperson for covering all the categories. Now coming to the number of shops. Now number of shops, what you are going to do? You are given some mood points. That if this is my number of visits, if you go to the next uh, page, you will find that for 30 visits per week, 30 visits, uh, 30,000 visits in a year, pardon me, 30,000 visits in a year, the annual sales is 150 lakhs. So if I make, so suppose I'm calculating for this note, if I make 30,000 visits in one year and I've been given that this 30,000 and maximum people will work for 40 weeks and people will do 15 visits per week. So number of visits to be made in a week is 30,000 by 4, 30,000 by 40, that is 3,000 by 4, this is the number of optimum visits that I need to make for this, for reaching this figure and this number of visits I need to make in a week, now in a week my one salesperson, one salesperson makes 15 visits in a week. So this 3000, so if I rub this, this 3000 by 4 is my number of visits to be made per week is 3000 by 4. So if I go for 3000 by 4, 15 that is one person makes 15 visits so I'm going to get some figure 
supposedly 200, I'm getting a 50. Okay, so if my calculation is right, it's going to fetch me around 50 sales person. Now for this 50 sales person, I need to invest 9,000 per week. So if they work for 40 weeks, I need to invest 30, 3 lakh 60,000. 3 lakh 60,000 multiplied by 50 will give me a sales figure. Supposedly, if I multiply it by 50, that is 33.3180. So it's going to give me a figure of 180 lakhs. But my income is only 150 lakhs. So you need to compare that 150 lakhs is my income, 180 lakhs is my expenditure. And if this is my expenditure to cover that 150 lakhs, I'm running a loss of minus 30. That is, I'm running a loss of 30 lakhs. Similarly, for note 2, if you go, that is supposedly for 480 visits, it is 480 lakhs, it is 60 visits. So 60,000 visits in a year. So you would need to again go for that thing, that number of visits to be made per week, it's nothing but 60,000 by 40, that is one salesperson serves only for 40 weeks in a year, so 6,000 by 4, that is my 1,500 visits per week. So we are seeing that if we divide this by 15 visits per week, that is one sales force makes, that is number of sales people, number of sales people I need is 1500 by 15, that is 100. So I need 100 people, 100 people and how much do I need to pay them per week? 9,000. How much do I need to pay them uh, in a year? 3,60,000. Each one I need to pay 3,60,000 as I have already mentioned. Into I am recruiting 100 people. So 360 lakhs. 360 lakhs compared to 480 lakhs is my profit of 120 lakhs. Profit of 120 lakhs. So similarly I need to go for the other nodes and I am going to find out where is my optimum profit. I am going to execute my sales force in such a way that it reaches an optimum profit. Where I'm going to keep it? I'm going to keep it 30,000 visits or 60,000 visits or 90,000 visits. Where I'm going to keep it? You'll have to go by the profit, finding the optimum. So this is the way that you need to target the warehouses and the shops. I've already told about the warehouses. So coming to, now these were the quantitative questions that were being asked. Now coming to the qualitative ones. If I go for qualitative questions, that is my second question, that how will you track, if you see the 2.1, create a report layout that will allow the salesperson to track their performance. Also the second question mentions that create a process flowchart. So how will a person know how many number of sales does he need to make and how many optimal number of sales has he made? So, we are seeing that only the shops, shop ID and with the sales figures, we are seeing shop ID supposedly 2 is having a sales figure of 2000. So along with all the shop IDs associated with all the sales, so to achieve that sales I need to find the number of task force, number of people that I would need number of sales people that I would, uh, number of visits rather I would need by a sales person. So I am seeing that if, now if I have to jot, jot down a hierarchy, it has been mentioned, it has been mentioned that one warehouse, warehouse sales to the shops and it sells nowhere other than the shops. So, if I go for like one warehouse ID would correspond to different shop IDs. Shop ID 1, shop ID 2 and shop ID 3 it's transferring to and all these shops should be in a particular pin ID. 
the distributed ID if I go for a postal zip. So for a particular postal zip, if I, if I see, see this, if I go for this information like shop ID 1 is having a postal zip of 411013 and shop ID 3 also has a postal zip of 411013. So I am seeing that shop 3 and shop 1 falls under one postal zip and also warehouse ID 1 also has that same postal zip 411013. So what happens is for a particular postal zip, postal zip I am writing, there are two shop id 1, shop id 3 and a warehouse id 1 that supplies further to the shops and corresponding to this postal id I have a particular representative id that is catering to this postal id. So if I see that for shop number one, my visitor represent visiting representative is two three nine four representative ID. So our representative ID can also have another postal ID to his name. Postal ID two is put postal ID one. So one representative. This is the hierarchy that under one postal ID there will be shops as well as warehouses. How much is the shop selling? We do not have figures for that if you read the problem properly. We only have the, how much the warehouse selling? We do not have figures for that. Shops only provide us the figure. So whatever the warehouse sells to the shop, shops sell to the market. So if I consider the total number of sales that's being made in a shop, it consists of the individual representative going to the shop as well as the individual representative going to the Warehouse. Now this warehouse also also has a different representative ID. So it's not necessarily that postal under one post this representative ID. If you see that the warehouse information, this representative ID is five six seven two. So if we see that it's not necessary that one postal ID will be looked by one representative ID only. This warehouse which is under this postal ID is being looked upon by a representative ID which is not serving the shops or this postal ID. So you are seeing two representative IDs related to the same postal ID. So you need to make this uh, hierarchy. You need to make a different hierarchy for uh, warehouse ID. So if I make a hierarchy for the warehouse ID, it will be like one postal zip, one warehouse, whereas one warehouse two, and this warehouse one, warehouse two, this is being served by a representative ID. This is for the warehouse. For this case, it will be 5672 or warehouse 21, supposedly. And then we see for another postal zip, for the same postal zip maybe, the shops that come under SH1 and SH2 will be served by another representative ID. So a representative ID has to see which postal IDs or which warehouses are you catering to and he must be provided with the shop details that this warehouse is surfing like so supposedly warehouse 1 is surfing to shop id 1 and shop id 2 so you get the figures of shop id 1 and shop id 2 and you get to know that what is the amount of goods that the warehouse has bought from these two shops and hence you plan the hierarchy to find out how much you have sold to the warehouses so this is the hierarchy that you need to jot down and this is the performance table that you need to make. That is, for a representative, if we go to question number one, 
for a representative id there will be supposedly the shop id is equals to the warehouse id is equals to one supposedly he caters one and three shop ids he caters one to warehouse ids and then we get the this warehouse one caters to supposedly shop one and shop three so we get the figure from shop one and shop three how much they have sold these are the figures r1 and r2 revenue one and revenue two and supposedly two only serves shop four so we get the revenue three we add this up to find the total revenue or total number of sales that is generated and we also get the direct figures from r5 r6 and we get the r total once again here for the shops so we get the r total warehouses r total shops and total number of visits made to warehouses total number of visits made to shops by one representative id so this is how he tracks down and if we can put another code here that is the postal zips corresponding to the warehouse ids and the shop ids then it will be easier to track down that warehouse id one serves s1 and s3 of its own postal id so this is the table that one representative should be aware of that how many visits he has made and how many visits he has he is he still remaining to make apart from this the quality checks if you come to question number 2.3 they have asked for the quality checks that you should do so if you go for the last page there you will see there is a shop id of minus 1 that's a wrong value so you need to make alpha numeric errors you need to check those whether it's existing or not supposedly uh, if you see that there is there will be some cases that i was given in a uh, in a case study problem that there was a mail id of supposedly s dot gosh at the rate mail dot com to track the performance of the uh, details of the person who is serving as my representative that is not possible because it is a wrong domain that he has provided so you need to make uh, uh, quality checks about the domain he is providing quality checks about the numbers he is providing quality checks about whether this shop id is minus 1 or plus 1 or having a alpha numeric value if the postal ids can start with it cannot start with zero some postal ids may be starting with 0024 that is impossible some mobile may have more numbers of Uh, representatives may have 11 digits that is not possible so you need to make this quality checks and you need to make sure that all the data that has been entered are correct and if any of them are found wrong in the system it has to be changed by coding itself coding the problem itself so now coming to some qualitative discussion if we consider the part of 3 3.1 that is consider that the system has been developed to load data and create the performance reports what kind of challenges do you associate in working on such a process oriented project so if the person that's reporting that is my representative id reports a false data that i have already made a visit to somewhere so you need to make uh, some check checkpoints like when he goes to the shops he will the shopkeeper will enter the data on his mobile that he has come so he will directly enter in the app itself that well the representative has visited me he has tried to convince me these are the number of sales that i have given him these are the number of visits that he is making so to update the data it has to be done on both sides to check whether he is going or not it has to be done by the representative it has to be done by the shopkeeper on at which the representative is going to so these are the quality checks that you can keep many a times it has been asked that to increase the number of sales to how would you a target what would be your target force then you have to segregate you have to segment you have to target the particular genre like if i am selling soap i can go to other than warehouses or shops i can go to big supermarkets where um, wholesale or the wholesale markets where people come in bulk numbers and also goods are sold in bulk numbers we can target those areas we can segregate our audience like who are going to be our audience who is going to for a mobile company it's the youth that buys the mobile if we go for uh, centers where the youth generally visits like shopping malls or uh, movie theaters pbrs we are going to chart down that so for different companies different questions will be laid that what should be your strategy and these are mostly qualitative questions do not spend time in 
waste time in writing the solutions, just write a one liner and explain it in the hall. So many of questions are going to be countered as well, like if we optimize it to 100, what will be the case? Like we cannot pay more than 100 uh, sales, uh, say we cannot employ more than 100 sales persons. So you need to go for the merchant value, the, the bigger ones, the that's going to provide me with more money, I'm going to target that, I'm going to optimize that, I'm going to leave the one that is not going to provide me that much money. Similarly, for the shops also, you need to optimize by quantitatively calculating it. Now, the second part may seem a little deceptive to you, how to jot, jot down the hierarchy, but trust me, if you go by your instinct, if you see the figures, which warehouse ID is corresponding to which postal ID, which warehouse ID is corresponding to which shop ID, and why, which representative ID is responsible for the warehouse ID and the shop ID. Most of the cases, you will find that one representative ID is responsible for one postal ID, and that postal ID, rep ID is representing one postal ID and that postal ID is having some shop IDs and one warehouse ID that's serving the shops of that particular postal ID. So you can get all the figures from the shops. This is the hierarchy. Then you are going to jot down what is been the total revenue or total number of visits in that particular postal ID and then you are going to make a report to the representative ID that this you are surfing this postal ID these are the number of visits that you have total made and these are the revenues that means that, that is being generated you need to make this much number of visits more in this month so this is how we can track his performance and most of the cases you will find this hierarchy so you need to jot down the hierarchy by seeing the study in the table so this is mostly it. one is quantitative approach I've already shown how we are going to do it if you have to find the optimum one is more of a qualitative and logical approach how we want to jot down the hierarchy how we are going to make a table that gives a record of how many visits he has made how what is his, what has been his performance and lastly some qualitative discussion which lies to each individual's own discretion and to different case study problems different solutions and different questions asked so coming to the end of that it's been a lengthy video but please uh, i hope that you have gone through it you will be able to understand all the case study things so I think that's it for today. If you like the video, like it, share it, subscribe to our channel. We will be coming with more and more updated videos. If you have some request, please put it on our mail IDs. And uh, if we have rushed on it, please excuse us for that. Keep on viewing our channel. Thank you very much.